Every day, St. Luke's Hospital sees new families born. Nearly 225 babies are born at the birth care center every month. 10% of those babies will spend some time in the newborn intensive care unit. Creating a caring and nurturing environment for those families is the responsibility of the doctors, nurses, and other staff inside St. Luke's Birth Care. The Helen G. Nassif Center for Women's and Children's Health practices family-centered care. The birthing suites are equipped with the latest technology and offer a comfortable and quiet place for families to discover their new family. St. Luke's NICU is the only regional level 2 newborn intensive care unit in Cedar Rapids. The doctors and staff work to save the lives of the smallest babies. So right after it was delivered, they brought me in, and he was laying on he was on the table, and they were you know, caring for him, and and he started crying. It sounded like a little kitten crying, and I just looked at this little child, and I just the first thought run through my head of how could something so small survive? That was just really hard. I was crying then too, but. Just um, it's your baby. <laughs> that's, that's your, your son. that's my son laying there, and it's not a thing in the world I can do. We yeah. weren't expecting it at all. Um, we just thought that I was going to go into the emergency room and just be told it was just I just had pain. Um, you know, we had no clue that we were going to be delivering a 13 ounce baby that day. Everything that's normal, you know, is just ripped away and. Your um, roll gets turned upside down, and David wheeled me up to see him, and we stopped right outside of his NICU room. And David, and he knelt down and he said, "Paige, he said, um, he said he doesn't look like a baby, and he said um, that you know he, he's you just need to prepare yourself for all of this." And so we went in. Um, and I think I was just so taken by everything that he was hooked up to. I didn't see the, the baby at that time, and I don't think it was until we brought Nolan in. They wanted us um, to bring Nolan in um, because we didn't know if, you know, we wanted Nolan to see him al alive. And um, and I remember Nolan, Landon was in a kangaroo bed, and so he was completely enclosed. And I remember David held Nolan up, and Nolan put his face on the bed and he just he just looked at Landon and it was like a perfect moment. Started having a little bit of cramping, a little bit of preterm labor, and you know, I was on my feet a lot and doing some coaching and things like that. So I had come into St. Luke's and just told them, you know, this is what kind of what I'm experiencing the first time. It was just five days before he was born, and ended up having to come in again with preterm um, labor and just couldn't get it stopped um, once we got here. Yeah, if you're uh, if you come in in uh, preterm labor and you breach and uh, it's not responding to um, medical interventions to slow down labor, then they'll then they'll go particularly quickly. They'll go pretty quickly, particularly if um, the baby shows any signs of distress or um, there's any concern for mom or baby's well-being. Mm -hmm. And have ended up having to have a um, emergency cesarean. He was breech. Um, he came really, really quickly, 
um, we were here I, I actually drove myself to the hospital just thinking it was cramping again they were maybe gonna give me some stuff for dehydration and um, just progress very quickly um, throughout that morning and I got here at 8:30, and he was born at 11:22. so yeah very much a surprise for all of us <laughs> Uh, Jameson was born at about 26 weeks, and I believe, if I remember correctly, it was about a pound 13 ounces. Um, he actually did quite well. He had some mild respiratory distress syndrome, which is where a baby's lungs are a little bit premature, and he needed to be on a respirator for less than a day. Basically, what we do is we, we round the babies every day. Most of these premature babies that are born between 23 and 26 weeks usually have the same basic problems. They have something called apnea, where they stop breathing for 15 to 20 seconds or more, which is why there's all these babies are on monitors. Uh, they may have uh, problems with uh, small vessels in their heart that are normally supposed to close after birth that stay open. Um, they very often uh, have uh, mild feeding problems, and we have to feed these babies very slowly because everything in their system is really premature to start out, uh, including their intestinal system, their immune system, so they're more susceptible to infections. And so, you know, we pretty much take care of these babies on a day-to-day -day basis, watching out for these things, and and just gradually kind of monitor them and make sure they try and um, gradually get healthy while we continue to monitor for all the basic problems that a premature baby can get. Um, fortunately, Jameson had very little problems during the time that he was here. This is his iron he's getting, just a slow push in there, going through his NG tube. Um, once he goes home, you'll just be able to put that in the side of his cheek while he's sucking on his passing before his feeding. So this is something he will get when he's home? Yep. And this is just given in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. This is his caffeine. It's his Starbucks for the day. Mm -hmm. Give him a little breast milk helps him on his pacifier here. Good job. Oh, <laughs> boy. See here. <laughs> At this point, what we tend to see is babies who uh, need a little bit of time and support um, with feeding by mouth. Are you hungry? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's been one heck of a roller coaster ride, that's for sure. I mean, I, the whole, his whole birth process was just shock. I can just remember sitting downstairs thinking, this is just a dream. Like, I just can't believe I'm here. And I can remember coming up for the first time to meet him. Um, we walk through the hallway out here, and in the hallway there's those pictures of all of some of the kiddos that they've had here, pictures of them when they were first born, you know, and could fit in your hand, and then pictures of them being healthy, happy kids now. And I think that was the, that's the first emotion that I remember thinking, you know, I think this is going to be okay, because at first you think, you know, what are we going to do? This is, you know, scary. He's tiny. You know, is he going to is he going to live? I can remember thinking that too. You know, he's in such great hands here, and, you know, they just give you a little more peace of mind, you know, taking care of him. So I'd like to have a few nurses come home with me, if they will. <laughs> Can we help you? Hey, this is Robin. We're going to give Jameson a bath. Okay. But, you know, they've just become part of our family, so it's going to be mixed feelings, you know, because they've just done such a wonderful job with him. It's going to be hard to leave here. Those nurses also help the parents understand um, what it looks like when a baby's having trouble. And then Dad can help you. I'll hold this and you can help her wash. Actually, I'll just hold his head here, Jer, if you want to. Do you like this part? Oh, yes. I don't mind it so much. Huh? No, he doesn't. He really has never squawked too much about bath time, have you? His ear is weird. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Well, it makes me a little nervous, to be really honest with you. Just, you know, just to not have... <laughs> not have Robin or not, you know, Dr. Drew here, you know, to, to reassure us that he's okay, just to make sure that I'm making the right choices for him. But I, I just can't wait to put him in his car seat. Those accidents make him stink. <laughs> yes, we have one head down. One head down. So we got A's head is right here. Mm -hmm. So right on your bladder. I know that. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Are you with them yet or no? 
We had a very early ultrasound and, and the tech turned the screen on for us and she said, well, your IUI worked, here are your twins. And Scott sat down faster than I think I've ever seen him move and I started laughing. Uh, they have a little difficult to conceive this time. After a, a period of trying more than a year, we decided to uh, initiate infertility treatment after a certain workup was done. I don't have difficult pregnancies, thank goodness, but this one has been exhausting. I'm toting around a third trimester belly already for two months and I still have six weeks to go. So it's, it's just physically been tiring. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's kind of, you know, they say that normal pregnancy is like training for a marathon, but this feels kind of like training for a super marathon. I'm I'm looking forward to um, getting to know them as little people, um, and to you know the same way that you discover your other children. I'm I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to that process a lot. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Uh, fine, I think. All right. Um. Well, the the fact of the matter is, that St. Luke's has the fact of the matter is that St. Luke's has the NICU in town. Um, in addition to the expert care that they're able to give their patients. The um, baby is head down. Mm -hmm. A is good. The baby B is slightly bigger mm -hmm. than A. I can see about five days bigger. That's yeah. still within normal limits. So preterm birth is one of the things we're trying to uh, monitor for. We try to intervene if we can, and we try to prepare them for it. Um, going into a pregnancy where complications are uh, you know, a very real possibility, we wanted to make sure that we had all of our bases covered. I think you're doing good. Oops, thank you. You're a champ. I was feeling kind of off most of the day, very uncomfortable, more so than I had been in many weeks, actually, and um, was losing my mucus plug, which is one of those early signs of labor, but it, it's one of those signs that could means it could happen that day or, you know, three weeks later, so not one of those things that normally keeps people awake, but I was uh, aware that it was happening, and it made me a little bit excited, so I wasn't sleeping too well, and while I was in bed, I felt that telltale pop gush and managed with my hugely pregnant cat-like reflexes to hop out of the bed and not flood the mattress. Right now she's two centimeters dilated, about 70% of face and about minus three station. Um, Dr. Zhang is on her way in right now, so she'll probably come in and do a bedside scan just so we can see which, ba which way the babies are laying in there. Okay, so she's in a good spot? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just give a try and see what happens. Uh, well, it feels like the show's finally getting on the road here, which is good. Um, contractions have been um, organizing into a more consistent pattern and getting stronger, which is also good. Mm. They've been very active most of the night, um, which is, it's fun. Um, the room will be full of at least 10 people or more and we have a double team from an ICU. They set up two warmers for the baby and usually a neonatologist may get called and to stand by. So twin pregnancy is like a big birthday party and a lot of people uh, are there and involved with their care and, and sometimes the patient surprise at how many people they will need to deliver the twins than the one baby. So when you have a contraction, you go in and push. And that means you can grab your legs and pull back on them. Actually, Scott, I'll probably have you help her with her head. Just so she's getting more and more pressure. Just going to wash you off a little bit. When she's pushing. How far down the baby is. If we could go up, that would be good. Oh, it's right there. Good job. Awesome. Just finished one, so. One set of pushes? No, yeah, one contraction. She's, oh, we haven't pushed. Okay. Starting one. Go ahead and push. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. hang on. Let's hang on a minute. Okay. Just, that was perfect. That's why, I, You're a good did, pusher. that's why I didn't want to start You're the a good pusher. <laughs> hard. Push right down there. That's perfect, sweetie. That's perfect. Good. Okay, grab another breath and push again. We'll have this baby. Do we know what this one is? They're supposed to be two girls. girls. Two girls huh? Very close, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now just relax. That's awesome. That's perfect. Just easing her out, okay? Sorry. Thanks, Red. All right. Oh. Looks like a baby. Diane, come right here. She looks great, honey. I didn't get it off. Okay, Papa. Ready, Scott? I can't see. I know. No, no, no. Up here. Oh, sorry. Between the, right oh, in between okay. them. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. John. Sorry, I didn't see the There you go. Everybody say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on your left. That was awesome. No, I'm not. You had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's have you push. Let's see if you can push that head out of there. I don't know if you can without a contraction or not. I can't even tell if I'm having. Okay. Well, you. Yeah, yeah not. Not, not, but. Maybe. Learn to push anyway. Go ahead and push anyway, honey. Had a girl. Okay, big breath in. Lean his bag and push right through it. Atta girl. Hard. Push right down there. All right. Let's just wait for. Okay. We're just waiting for a contraction to. It, it may take a while. Feels like there's one coming. Can you feel any pressure? I, I honestly, there's so much pulling. Why don't you try? Try yeah. pushing. That's yeah, down there, real good shape. So. Go ahead and push, sweetie. Watch your push. Big push. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Um, well, I have to say that uh, it was a very easy delivery, at least as far as I was concerned. It wasn't, it, um, I didn't, I wasn't exhausted by it. Yeah, the actual labor and delivery went very smoothly and very easily. Yeah. Um, I'm very fortunate for that. Um. Okay, now you can back off. Okay. All right. Come on, look down. Here's number two. Time. <laughs> oh, sweet pea. She'll be a soprano, I think. Yeah. You got something else to hook on. Jill. Oh. First and foremost, we wanted to be in a facility that had NICU on site. Um, right. If anything had happened and one of the girls or both of the girls needed to be in the NICU, I and I was admitted, I wanted to be in the same hospital. Oh, they were better. <laughs> we got him. You got him. Yeah. It's just you know the birth of the babies there. It's the birth of a family when you when you're in that situation and everybody was thrilled for us. Um, and which you know when everybody's happy, then it's just happy, I guess. been 96 days and he's been attached to something so it's going to be wild <laughs> last time buddy get those off well this is what it's about the day they the day they go home it's a very um, very re rewarding to see a baby that's been so small and sick thrive and do well and see his parents do an amazing job you ready for this? The real world, buddy. <laughs> when they come back for their visits and for our annual reunion, that's another thing that means a lot. Jameson so. smiled. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> there we go. We feel like they become part of our family forever. Forever. 
so we get get caught up and pictures are always sent. That's why I continue to work here. It's it's real it's really special. Take care. Congratulations. Enjoy it. We had a long stay in the NICU, uh, 97 days. Um, so we were driving back and forth from here and he stayed with the nurses at the NICU and uh, did very well. We came home off of monitors. He didn't have any more oxygen. He didn't have any um, of the heart rate monitors or anything. Um, nothing real major. So we came home with nothing, which is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think our fears coming home were not having the monitors, not having the nurses so close. You know, we just kind of are in that little bubble in the NICU and you know that everything's safe and you know that you know, he's going to be fine and they're going to take great care of him. So when we came home, we were on our own and <laughs> we just thought, oh goodness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of surreal to look back and think, oh my God. You know, you kind of look back at those pictures and think, oh my goodness. You just can't believe. Because by looking at him, a lot of people don't even realize that he was a preemie. So we just realize how lucky we are and... You know, he's been a really good baby since we've gotten home. Mm -hmm. I, I always tell everybody that I think he's good now because he feels guilty about be putting us through so much stress in the beginning. <laughs> but and I think that words can never describe what they did for, for us and for our family. I mean, they, I mean, they're miracle workers. Bottom line, they're miracle workers, and we can never thank them enough for what they did for, for Jameson because he came into the world with odds definitely against him. And... I don't think that they ever had a doubt in their mind that, you know, that he was going to be okay. Doing a little supplemental feeding it was them. approached with a, uh, anticipation and a little bit of, of, of fear just because didn't know what was going to happen um, you know hoping for the best um, and we were beyond fortunate enough to have everything that good could happen happen so we feel very 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 lucky um, you know we have had friends uh, and colleagues who have moved to the area and, and have said you know where where would you go or what would you do and um, you know I, I've, without hesitation, have always recommended you know go go tour the facility. That's mm -hmm. something you want to go see. You want to talk to the nurses and and, and um, look into um, pre-birth classes. You can mm -hmm. check out um, the education um, support um, for parents and parents to be. Typically, when we come out, we do about three things, and the first thing that we do, or not the first thing, one of the things that we do is check mom, and we do the vitals, and we just kind of have, oh, five or ten questions about her health in general, and then we will also answer any questions that she has. Um, then we, when we check babies, we listen to their heartbeat. Oh, she's perfect. We think so. Oh, yeah. We check for rhythm, rate, murmurs, those kinds of things. We have a fast little heartbeat. We listen for lung clarity. Um, we check their little soft spots when we're out here with that. We look at their skin color, um, their cords. Good. Oh my, you have the hiccups. Um, and then obviously we weigh them and make sure that they are either not losing too much or that they have started back to gain. She is 5'11". Uh, when their colors are looking jaundiced, we go ahead and check for bilirubin levels. So once mom gets baby dressed, that'll probably be the next thing that we'll go ahead and do. Wow. Look at what they're doing, though, you guys, for wets and poopies. That's yeah. phenomenal. You know, it, it gets a little better each day in terms of figuring out routine, and then things will change again. But So we know we're in for a challenge for the next few years. And the hardest part is just that when, particularly if one of us is alone with the babies, it's impossible to get to everybody's needs the instant they need to be met. Yeah. So everyone is having to learn a lot of patience. Landon's the smallest baby ever to survive in Cedar Rapids, and I think he was 370 grams, um, about 12 and a half ounces. Um, he, 
obviously was teeny, teeny, teeny. He has beaten some major odds. He uh, has grown and done very well, and he's a, a pretty big guy, decent-sized guy for, for his age at present, and um, he's making great progress developmentally. He's, uh, health problems are, are becoming less and less prominent, and I see him much less frequently than I used to, which is very nice. You were that size, weren't you? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Look at this. Felt like we were kind of blessed with it was so after he after he came home that he's going to still be followed by a pediatrician that also works in the NICU and that has that level of experience and being able to follow up our child and having you know a doctor that you know he knows your son he knows what your son has been through he knows what your son needs and and he was doctor now was i mean awesome. he he always went above and beyond i mean if we needed something he was just a phone call away and he was always got back to us right away I'm six years old. he's an interesting guy we're good buddies he uh i like him he likes me we don't he doesn't have fears he's making good developmental progress and and uh, his his uh, his parents provide excellent care yeah he, he just, he's come out of his shell this doctor um, doctor now told us that he thought that you know five the five and six year old years would really be you know the where Landon would you know really come out with what he was doing and um, you know and, and it has been it's just been phenomenal. Another day ends at St. Luke's Hospital. More babies and parents are learning to take their first steps into becoming a family. With the help and care of the doctors and nurses inside St. Luke's Birth Care. is a happy handful, sweet but plenty of spice. For her, six years is a lifetime. For us, each day is a gift, because Chloe is our St. Luke's miracle. She was born way too early, so tiny she fit in her dad's hand. We weren't ready for that, but St. Luke's was. What can I say about St. Luke's newborn intensive care? One word, Chloe. When it matters most, choose St. Luke's.